Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of November 2020 and the time has just gone 12.09 GMT. And it's been a very bullish start to the European trading session. Um, at the at the equity markets in Europe were already in quite a decent shape uh, given the kind of the, the bullish sentiment we saw at the back end of last week in relation to the US presidential election. That was really been assisted. Um, that really kind of carried over into the early hours, with the the beginning of trading today on Monday. Uh, but in the last hour, probably not even the last half hour, we've had a very positive update for, in relation to the coronavirus crisis. Pfizer and BioNTech have been working on a potential uh, COVID-19 vaccine, and they stated that the kind of latest round of trials stated that the, the drug they're working on is more than 90% effective. So this has really jolted um, stock markets higher. They're already high, as I said, um, well in advance of the news, but this is really uh, taking things up a notch. In relation to US politics, Joe Biden won the US presidential election. We're not seeing any signs so far of Donald Trump conceding that he lost the election. It's looking likely that, that the Republicans are going to maintain control of the Senate, the upper house um, uh, in, the, in the US, and therefore it's going to be difficult for Mr. Biden to, do the, to, to bring in the kind of less pro-business policies that he wanted, higher taxes, tougher regulation in relation to uh, the pharma sector and also the tech sector. So that's the reason why stock markets were already reacting well. It seems that traders are pretty much are pretty, pretty content with a relatively, relatively restricted Joe Biden uh, entering the, the White House uh, in next year. But keep in mind, President Trump hasn't conceded. We could be in for a lengthy, lengthy and drawn out legal battle on that front. But for the time being, the Pfizer and BioNTech coronavirus uh, drug story, that's the real story in town at the moment. Uh, as always with, with the videos, I'll run through the week ahead. The week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under latest news and analysis. You'll find it here. Um, over the weekend, we have the tra tra trade figures out from China. Uh, tonight, after the close in the US, uh, we're going to have the third quarter numbers out from Beyond Meat, the kind of you know meat substitute crowd. Um, Tuesday, uh, we have a number of updates coming out with the German ZEW. Uh, we have third quarter numbers coming out from um, Persimmon. Keep in mind, Taylor Wimpy, another British home builder, had a positive update today. Tomorrow, we're going to have the, the UK's uh, most latest unemployment and earnings numbers. Um, on Wednesday, we have Q1 numbers coming out from JD Weatherspoons, kind of the big British pub chain. Vroom have third quarter numbers coming out um, on Wednesday too. <clears throat> Thursday is going to be a busy day. Uh, we have first quarter numbers coming out from Cisco Systems. Fourth quarter numbers coming out from Disney. Third quarter numbers coming out from ITV. And Planetaire Technologies have third quarter figures out. And then the big event on Thursday in terms of like on the economic front is going to be the UK third quarter GDP numbers. So this this, this will be kind of finding out are we going to see um, the elusive uh, uh, the elusive uh, V-shaped recovery in the economy. But keep in mind, we have seen a strong growth uh, rebound in the US, but we're still nowhere near the, 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 uh, the growth level we were at back in January, February in advance of the crisis. So for those of you who, who regularly watch my videos, what I'll do now is the usual routine. I'll run through the big indices, I'll run through the big currency pairs, and then finally I'll run through the big commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, like I said, well, look at this. Stocks are already, the big indices were already in quite decent shape going into, at the very beginning of this, of this, of this, of today's session, we saw stocks fell to a multi-month, multi-month low in October. They've been pushing higher. We've not hit levels last seen since August. Things were driving higher on the FTSE 100. We're comfortably above this red line here, the turn day moving average. Uh, while we can hold above that at 6,125, it's likely we could see further gains. From here, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around 6,342. Any moves to the downside on the FTSE 100 could find support come into play from this yellow line here, the 100 moving average. On a few occasions, that 
metric there, they're about active, as active resistance there, they're about in mid-September, it acts as a consolidation zone back in August, so keep an eye out for it. That comes into play just north of 6,000, in a 6,000 and 15, that area could act as support should we see a bit of a move to the downside uh, or any kind of pullbacks. But keep in mind, we've, we've been moving steadily higher the last few sessions and now with this, and now with this COVID-19 drug news, sentiment has really gone up a gear. In fact, you'll notice me kind of basically saying a fairly similar thing across the board when we're looking at the DAX, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, whereby we had multi-month lows in late October. We were already rebounding and pushing higher. Things got um, pushed, uh, ex pushed higher again on the back of the news that was looking like Biden would win the election, but not that the Republicans would maintain control of the Senate. We've been pushing higher here on the uh, on the Dow, on the DAX rather. We're back up at levels last seen in kind of mid-September. So we really kind of shaken off uh, a lot of the the negative moves that we saw in late October. If it continues to drive drive higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs of early September in around 13,460 there thereabouts. And keep in mind that the, the level that was achieved in September was basically the highest the highest the highest level achieved since February, March. You know, they're talking levels since kind of that the pandemic really set in. Uh, if we do see a bit of a drift drift lower, we could see support come into play um, in around this zone here. Um, some consolidation we saw uh, in around the kind of 12,530 mark. Uh, if you go below that, support could come to play from this area here in around 12,369. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in the US, starting up the Dow Jones. Wow, so the Dow Jones, obviously cash trading hasn't begun yet, but we've really kind of had a jolt to the upside. In fact, the highs that were, were, you know, the level we're seeing the Dow Jones, uh, the cash Dow Jones, we know when the cash trade does begin, we're now looking at levels back last seen. Um, possibly, we could even be looking towards, we could be looking towards all-time highs. This market keeps on moving, moving. Um, that we're expecting the Dow Jones to actually achieve, um, or the looks of it, all-time highs. This is a huge move that we're seeing right here, right now. Yeah, so we are looking to move comfortably above the highs that we saw in February, which are an all-time high. Um, so we're currently expecting the, the, the cash Dow Jones, once it gets trading, to begin around 29,890. So if we continue to press on higher from here, 30,000 is going to be the next big level to keep an eye for, a big kind of psychological number on that front. If we do manage to drift a bit lower from here, back towards 29, you know, we could be looking at heading back down towards uh, 29,000. If we have a fairly sizable pullback, support could come into play from this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average at 27,924. Let's take a look at how bullish things are going to be on the S&P 500. Okay. I'm guessing we're going to be seeing things that we're also going to be looking at, you know, a new all-time high. So as you can see here, we had an all-time high in September. We had the lower low, the lower high, the lower low. We had a decent re recovery from late September into early October, but the highs of October failed to take off the highs of September. We've had a sell-off in October, like as we did across the board. We've been driving higher recently, and we're looking now expecting the, the S&P 500 to open at around 3,640, well above all-time highs that were achieved back in September. So we're in very bullish territory here. If we continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting, you know, we, we, we're pretty much in uncharted territory. So we could be looking at heading towards 3,650, 60, so on and so forth. Uh, any pullbacks that we do, that we could see, uh, might find support from this general zone here in around 3,530 down to around 3,522. That zone there uh, could act as support for CDC on the downside. If we take out that level, support could come into play from this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average, uh, and that is just north of 3,400. It's in a 3,402. Notice how it acted as support and resistance not too long ago. Uh, so it could, act, it could be of importance in the future. 
but obviously there are no guarantees. Now, let's take a look at what's going on in the major currency markets. In the last few weeks and months, the dollar index has acted uh, has been a popular safe haven play. And conversely, whenever, it's, whenever there's been bullish sentiment running through stocks and metals and commodities, we've seen the dollar we've seen the dollar slip. So it's you know we're we're not sure, haven't really changed a whole lot. The change in the day is fairly low on the um on euro dollar today. But keep in mind, today we've already hit you know the, a multi-week high levels last seen in September. We've been moving higher the last few sessions, partially because if partially because the uh, the euro the euro starting are kind of a proxy proxy in that if the dollar is risk off the, the other side of the trade euro uh, is risk on so when overall central center have been improving in stock markets we've seen a dip in the dollar and in turn a rise in euro dollar so if we continue to pre press on higher from here we could be looking heading back up towards this area here in around the kind of one spot 20 area move that downside could find support from one spot 18 or perhaps in this blue line here the 50 moving average and that comes into play in at one spot, 17, 70, 76. It's a similar issue picture of where pound sterling, sterling, pound dollar rather, rather. It's not as bullish, as bullish but I'm going to call it ball and ball power in that we yeah, have achieved market, market sterling, sterling pound, sorry, sorry sterling dollar, dollar rather, has broadly been moving higher the last few the last few weeks. Today we've hit the highest level it seems since early September, so we're talking about there, they're about a two-month high on cable pound dollar. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 130, and, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up toward this zone here in around one spot 3269. Um, if you have a, if you have a fairly decent pullback in pound sterling, we could head back toward this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at one spot 2979. So the entire zone of kind of one 130, one spot 2979, that entire area could act as support should we have a fairly decent pullback. Coming up now to commodities. So looking at first first off with the uh, with the gold market. So traditionally gold has been a safe haven play, uh, but we, what we've also seen in gold is that whenever but more recently, because the dollar has acted as a safe haven play, a strong, a weaker dollar has often assisted gold, that relationship hasn't always been the case. So we're kind of back to the old relationship whereby gold tends to outperform when traders are nervous and stocks are falling. Today we're seeing stocks rallying and as you can see here, a fairly sizable um, sell-off in the gold market. Now, if you take a look at the price action, in terms of we could be coming to an important level because when gold fell to you know multi-week multi-month lows in late September we can see that this area here in around the 100 moving average acted nicely as support and we've had an aggressive move to the downside today on the back of the you know Pfizer COVID um, um, Pfizer BioNTech news and what do you know we're on back to this 100 moving average so it could be a, a, an important point on gold which also coincides with 1900 so not only is it kind of a big number it's also a metric which has been of importance in the past so we could see support come into play from 1900 but if the if we do see a continued move lower we can head back down toward this zone here in around 1860 and a break below 1860 could take us back down toward this area here in around 1848 if on the other hand this is just to get a this is just a kind of a knee-jerk reaction traders dump gold because they're buying they're buying up stocks it could be a case of that the market settles down trades trades a bit sideways and then the broader upward trend of the last few weeks uh continues because if you take a look at the price action it's broadly been moving higher you've seen you know the higher high the higher low the higher high so it, if the broader upward trend continues we could be looking at targeting this zone here in at 1973 and if you go beyond that we could then be looking at heading up towards uh, 2000, and that's a big psych psychological number. And lastly, coming on to oil markets, I'll take a look at Brent crude oil, the January contract. So, like with stocks, we saw the overall that there was concerns about in um, in late October, late October, early November, there were concerns about what's going on with the state of the global economy, what's going on with political uncertainty in the US and the kind of lockdowns that are coming into, into many countries around the world, particularly in Europe. 
Saw stocks, we saw a decent rebound. And what do you know? When overall sentiment in relation to COVID-19 has been lifted today, we're seeing a decent move to the upside in Brent crude oil. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the this yellow line here, the one day moving average. That comes into play at 43, spot 45. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up toward this zone here in around kind of 44. And then if you kind of head, head take up these highs along here. Uh, the highs of mid-September in around 44, about 76. If we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up towards the highs of early September. Uh, if, if the energy market does manage to pull itself yet again, we could be looking at heading back down towards Friday's lows in around 39, 39 33. 33. And we all that, all that, that. take us down to down down this general zone here in 38. 38. And that's all, that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.